the only thing holding back, uh, I guess, Biden from giving the total go-ahead. Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the UAE, Bahrain, and Kuwait have declared neutrality and will not allow the U.S. to use their air bases against Iran. That probably won't stop Iran from hitting them, I suspect. So we had to blow it up. <laughs> there are some new details tonight on the election, which is so central to this war that we are covering here tonight. And a specific point about where Harris is gaining ground. Crucial swing states, and we'll tell you why. Yeah, we blow up orphanage because uh, terror baby, Ukrainian Nazi baby. We find copy of Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler. We find copy of Mein Kampf in Ukrainian orphanage. That's why we blow up orphanage. This is Ukrainian Nazi baby. That's that would be the equivalent of CNN literally doing that for Russia. Now, for you, if that comes across as like completely insane, that's because it is. Okay, it is. It is insane when Israel does it, and it's insane if Russia were to do it. Yeah, if Russia were to try and do that on CNN, which is laughable, of course, no Russian general is going on CNN. Okay, no one would believe it. But when Israel says it, everyone's like, oh well, you know, it's probably real and if you don't think so you're anti-semitic <laughs> continue the fight until israel ends its war on gaza and despite the setbacks hezbollah has demonstrated its capabilities to israeli troops the military has confirmed the killing of several soldiers since the ground operation in lebanon began on tuesday so is hezbollah prepared for a long battle with israel and how will it face discontent among lebanese civilians at the prospect of another war we'll discuss that and more with our panel of guests. But first, this report from Ferdia Kar. Israeli strikes pound Dahia in southern Beirut, just some of many in the past two weeks. A Hezbollah stronghold, it was here that the group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, was killed in a major attack last Friday. It was the heaviest of many blows Hezbollah has sustained since October 7th, but not the first. In September, an Israeli airstrike killed Ibrahim Akil, the commander of the elite Radwan force. And in July, Hezbollah chief of staff, Fuad Shukr, met the same fate. In September, the group suffered what it described as one of its worst intelligence breaches. Thousands of communication devices across Lebanon exploded in coordinated attacks, killing nearly 40 people, including children, and injuring thousands of civilians. The Israeli military says its air raid campaign in southern and eastern Lebanon has destroyed dozens of Hezbollah targets. You weren't that far off with your Russian bid. Russia bizarrely includes Sims 3 among evidence of staged assassination plot. Russian security services have been accused of ineptly staging a Ukrainian neo-Nazi plot to assassinate a pro-Kremlin journalist. Observers believe that the agents planning evidence somehow confused the three mobile phone SIM cards for the video game The Sims 3. Well, I have to believe this, you know? I have to believe this. And if I don't, it's anti-Semitic. It's also killed hundreds of people, but the group says it won't give up. I guess it must have been true. <clears throat> Hezbollah... Hezbollah will continue with its goals and its presence in the field. The command system and the Mujahideen will continue following your plan, our dear Secretary General, with the same precision and the steps you have drawn up. The Israeli military believes it has seriously degraded Hezbollah and announced a ground operation inside Lebanon earlier this week. But Hezbollah is operating on familiar terrain. It has already killed several Israeli soldiers. Oh man. Ah, oh, that makes me so sad. Well, I have a really good suggestion, okay? I have a really good suggestion. Are you guys ready for this? Hold up. Big time suggestion. Uh, this will change the outcome of Israeli society. It's called Don't Fucking Invade Lebanon, okay? And I have a secondary suggestion on top of that. It's called Stop Doing Genocide in Gaza. This will fix all of your problems, okay? Really cool idea. Definitely should try it at least a little bit. Do you think Israel could get even more conservative support if they said started saying this is a war on the woke mind virus? Dude, they're already <laughs> they're already maxed out on their conservative support. I don't even think I don't think that there is anything more than they can get. They're already like at 99%, you know? Hezbollah was born as a guerrilla movement. Um, and this is where it's most comfortable, quite frankly, engaging in these sorts of engagements on the ground, um, in these kinds of confrontations. And of course, 
Um, they have a fair amount of experience at doing Bro, the only people that will be upset about not invading Lebanon is the Seaman Brigade because they all of a sudden no longer have semen to collect. That's it. I feel like that's a sacrifice that everyone should be willing to make. Okay? I know the goon platoon works very hard. Okay? They work very hard to extract cum directly from the penises and the ball sacks of fallen Israeli soldiers. I love that there are still people... I love that there are still people who go, is that really a thing? Every time I talk about it, every time I talk about it, there's always a motherfucker that's like, what? Nah, Google it. Google it. That'd be so fucking funny because woke mind virus is already something that has some sort of anti-Semitic undertone. It'd be like if Israel invaded Lebanon and said they're trying to stop the Great Replacement. Yeah, the, the thing is, they are doing that. They also do have the woke mind virus shit embedded. So like, <laughs> it's not that far off. They literally are doing that. Also, especially like Yair Netanyahu, brother, you have a New York Times article out. What do you mean? So what, what, what? It's not incorrect. It's true. Israel has a cum extraction squad that is real. That's a real thing. It's such a real thing that they literally have made YouTube videos about it. Like the IDF's own personal YouTube channel has released a YouTube video about the semen uh, brigade. So, you know, it's not. Like I, I, I didn't make it up. I, I wish it was made up. Doing this um, in Syria over the past decade, and uh, I think that it's quite telling that in uh, in some of the first encounters, uh, Israeli forces have already suffered significant losses. The extent of the damage to the armed group's capabilities is unclear. It continues to fire missiles into Israel, and it has tens of thousands of fighters, well armed with the backing of Iran. Hezbollah says it won't surrender until Israel ends its war on Gaza. Freddy Akar, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. Let's bring in our guests from Beirut. We are joined by Sami Atallah, who is the founding director of the policy initiative and independent Lebanese think tank. In London, Yazid Sayah, senior fellow at the Malcolm H. Kerr Carnegie Middle East Center and in Geneva, Joseph Dahar, visiting professor at Lausanne University and author of the book Hezbollah, the Political Economy of Lebanon's Party of God. Welcome to the program, Sami. After a series of major setbacks, can Hezbollah rebuild itself? Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, Hezbollah has taken major blows in the last two weeks. As you very well said, the assassination of its leader, Said Hassan Nasrallah, is a huge blow. Uh, its senior leadership has been decapitated, decapitated, sorry. And obviously the attacks on it via the pagers uh, and other communication channels uh, really weakened the party. However, I think what we're seeing right now is that Hezbollah is ready for the war on the ground. In fact, Hezbollah has been preparing for the war on the ground. It's the war that it has prepared for for many, many years, for probably for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Unlike the war or the phase of the war that preceded this, which was an intelligence war, mm -hmm. uh, a war that is obviously with air, full airstrikes on Lebanon, Hezbollah is not strong at this kind of war. Hezbollah is waiting for the war on the ground. And in fact, the last two days, we've seen some major hits uh, to the Israeli army. So given that the command and control uh, system mm -hmm. is still intact, and given they're still able to... Uh, uh, throw missiles at Israel, it seems from their performance on the ground that they have retaken the initiative and they're able to inflict at least uh, some pain to the Israeli army. Yazid, if we go back a few weeks ago, you see that Hezbollah has lost its top military commander, Fuad Shuka, its top political leader, Hassan Nasrallah, its number three, Ali Karaki, the leadership of its elite force, Ar Ridwan. Uh, a sizable portion of its stockpile has been destroyed, according to Israeli military commanders. Is it fair to say that Hezbollah's main goal now is to survive this conflict without further major blows? I'm not sure I'd call that the main objective of Hezbollah at the moment. Clearly, that's something <clears throat> that it will see as important and that is necessary if it is to carry on the fight in the future. 
Um, but for now, it's basically waging, continuing to wage this war in continuation of the position it's taken over the last year, which is linking the Lebanese front with the conflict in Gaza, basically saying there will be a ceasefire in Lebanon if there's a ceasefire in Gaza. And, uh, and it's not clear that at this point Israel would be satisfied even if Hezbollah accepted a delinkage and a return to the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1701 of 2006, which would see Hezbollah withdrawal from the border area. Um, Israel probably aims for much more than that now. Nonetheless, for now, I think Hezbollah is still pursuing that linkage. And that means that it's, it's set itself up for more blows and more attrition, but it may be that it calculates in terms of its future interests that it's okay this is boring i thought that they would uh, i thought that they would uh i don't know i thought they would get into like uh more significant shit uh is there a reason more people don't bring up the dahia doctrine when defending israel's terror on civilians with the human shields argument people don't bring it up because they don't know about it i have i don't bring it up any longer because i've brought it up so many times also you watch it every day is the gaza strategy being repeated israel has warned people to bro i swear to god okay channel four Remember what I told you yesterday? Like they're slowly inching towards like good coverage. I told you every time there's like another hundred civilians killed, uh, channel four is like, okay, we reset. And now we are inching towards like good coverage on this issue because it kind of feels like uh, Israel's doing the same thing in Gaza or in Lebanon as they were in Gaza. To leave Southern Lebanon for their safety and head North. But Beirut is north. These airstrikes into the Dahia doctrine is the Israeli military doctrine that dictates that if you go to war with any group whatsoever, you fucking kill as many civilians as possible and you destroy as many civilian infrastructure as possible in an effort to universalize the punishment against whatever resistance group you're fighting against. That's it. It's like a super simple to understand concept. It's what America did. It's what a lot of major powers do, but it's uh, what America did in the Korean War. Uh, it's what America did in Vietnam. And it is what Israel does as well. Like the deliberate effort uh, or del the deliberate means in which you universalize and collectivize the punishment up on top of a civilian population. <clears throat> Today's spokesman looks frustrated by reporters putting on unpredictable things happen in conflict. But in the case of Gaza, you were pressing the Israelis for planes. Is it the same in Lebanon? We're having detailed conversations. You said the Israelis don't know what's going to happen. Is it okay for a country with U.S. weapons to go into a conflict with no way out? Hold on. Relax. Um, uh, we're going to watch as this unfolds, and we'll make our assessments as, as uh, in real time as they occur. The U.S. doesn't know how long this will take. I don't think if you ask Israel, they could tell you how long. It, it, it is the nature of a conflict that it is dynamic, right? <laughs> The, the the, hold on. That's to me. The, 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 it is it, unpredictable things happen in conflicts. Um, the enemy responds in a way, oftentimes that you don't expect. Already. This isn't to prejudge any possible outcome. It's just to say it's a fluid and dynamic situation. And I think all of us ought to be cautious in pretending to 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 say. I hate this freak. Um, this is the latest uh, Al Jazeera documentary. The guys that worked on it uh, wanted me to watch it. I don't know if we have enough time to watch it today. It's a brutal documentary about uh, all of the war crimes. All the war crimes, or not all of them, but some of the war crimes that uh, Israel's engaged in in Gaza, specifically. What the... Do you... Fr this freak, that guy was being smart? What? <clears throat> Thing is, guys, and I have, res uh, I have repeated this over and over again, uh, Yemen Houthis have released a video showing their October 1st missile attack on the Panama-flagged oil tanker Cordelia Moon, which they claim is a British vessel. They say their disruption of Red Sea trade will continue until there's a Gaza ceasefire. Houthi drone slams into ship, hits another in the Red Sea attacks. Um, <clears throat> so the thing is, Hezbollah is Hezbollah is a guerrilla move, uh, is a guerrilla resistance group. They are decentralized by nature. Okay, they are created in a way like their their leadership structure and the way that they operate is is created in a way to withstand decapitations like this okay decapitations in the in the figurative term i mean um like they don't that's the reason why they're slaughtering the the diaper brigade that is like trying to enter lebanon right now okay 
They are terrorists? Yes, Israel are the terrorists. You are correct. Um, you're absolutely correct. Israel and America are the terrorists in this situation. You're absolutely correct on this. Anyway, um, here, let's hear, let's hear further uh, how this uh, terrorist nation operates in Western media. Here's an interview with the Israeli ambassador Sign to the UK again. is conducted or concluded compared to an interview with the Lebanese ambassador to the UK. Same interviewer, same program, 24 hours apart. As much as we will not respond, all out war will happen. If we want to prevent all out war, we must make sure that the red line is clear to the Iranians and when they cross it, they pay the price. So actually all Israeli actions are preventing all out war and not creating it because we are responding to the aggression of the Iranian regime. Ambassador uh, Sipi Hotavele, Israeli ambassador to the UK. Thank you. We need to stop this carnage in Gaza, stop this carnage in, in Lebanon and seek a diplomatic solution. This expansion of the war theater does not help. It's, it's pushing the region towards abyss. It's time to reverse the trend and look for a diplomatic solution. That's, we, that's what we are saying. So, Rami Mortada, we've got to leave it there. Lebanon's ambassador there. Of course, you say a genocide was started on October the 7th. Uh, October the 7th was, of course, uh, the, the day that there was the biggest attack on uh, Jewish lives uh, since the Holocaust. Uh, I think it's an important point to put into that, uh, to that particular context. Rami Mortada. Lebanon's ambassador to the UK. Thank you for contextualizing the Lebanese man saying that uh, his people should not be seen as cannon fodder after interviewing the woman from the state that is making an argument as to how everyone and anyone in the crosshairs of Israel is cannon fodder. That's cool, you know. Yes, Israel is terrorist, but isn't Hezbollah terrorist too after 2012 bo uh, boss bombing? Yes, brother, okay. That's why I say Israel, much bigger terrorist. Israel has done a bus bombing times 100 in Lebanon. You understand that, right? Like if, if, you're, if you think human beings are human beings no matter what, and they are worthy of life no matter what, and you're angry about a bus bombing, in Lebanon alone in the past week, Israel has done 100 bus bombings. Okay? Israel, since October 7, has done... 100,000 bus bombings. You get it? You understand? Oh, wait, what am I doing? I was going to watch this. Sorry. Israel continues his aerial attack on Lebanon. What's next? To the city late this morning. More displacements are coming because late this afternoon, a sudden sign that Israel's so-called limited incursion <laughs> is in fact so cold expanding invasion here in jerusalem the idf the israeli military suddenly announced that the lebanese people must now get out of another 25 towns and villages in a message sent directly to your phone they say the idf does not intend to harm you so for your own safety you must evacuate your homes immediately and head north be careful you must not go south save your lives like gaza before Israel bans independent media coverage of its invasion, releasing its own censored video instead. Independent coverage from the Lebanese side, all but impossible too, because Israel says it'll treat any moving vehicle there as a potential target. To the east, the widening war continues. Overnight, Israeli airstrikes damaging a Russian airbase in Syria. Moscow's response, its ambassador to Israel this afternoon, advising all Russians to consider leaving the country. Israel is home to a core Russian Jewish population of 900,000 and an enlarged population of 1.5 million, including halakhali, halakhali, non-Jewish members of Jewish households, but excluding those who reside in Israel illegally. Remember what we talked about when I said, like, remember what I talked about when I said, like, Israel is a very Russian country? Yeah, that's like 15% of the population, bro. Now, the reason why this is funny is because Israel bombed uh, a base in Syria that uh, the Russian troops were positioned in. Are these Jews of Russian heritage or Russian Jews living in Israel? Um, both. But also a third thing that's even funnier, which is just Russians. Like not Jewish, just Russians. Which is why it's, which is why it's really funny. Let's just say Israel, not a very white nation, like by the standards of your eyeballs, uh, I'm not using whiteness as a socio-political concept here. I'm saying like white as in like I would be white. You know what I mean? Like pale skin. Um, but it still tries. 
it tries to white itself. Some of those, some of those initiatives uh, yield results such as this one. So anyway, this is why it's really funny when Israel uh, <laughs> ends up blowing up a position in Syria that is uh, a little too close to <laughs> a base that Russian soldiers are operating out of. And then Russia turns around and says, you guys need to leave Israel. When Russia says, you guys need to leave Israel, that means, like, Israel is going to have a massive population exodus. They're not going to leave anyway, but I suspect that it's a mistake that Israel will never repeat again. Many Russian oligarchs have Israeli citizenship and are actively evading sanctions because of it. Israel has also historically good ties with Russia and even Putin. Yes. Yeah, Russia is not going to attack Israel, dude. What do you mean? <laughs> They're not going to attack more Russia. Oh, wait. Someone, someone was... Someone in my Discord was talking about how, like, um, Russia would never attack an area with, like, millions of, of ethnic Russians. And it reminded me of how Russia certainly didn't do that in eastern Ukraine. The only thing stopping Russia from attacking Israel right now is the fact that, one, they have, you know, decent relationships. Uh, and also on top of that, <laughs> yeah, Russia is going to Russia is going to start doing a Donetsk. Donetsk in in uh israel <laughs> they're gonna be like wow we gotta denazify israel there's a there's a lot of uh there's a lot of ethnic russians that speak russian it's the third most popular language in israel we have to take it over sorry <laughs> that's what they're gonna do yeah the only thing that's actually stopping uh russia from doing anything against israel aside from their uh trade relations is uh yeah suspected israeli airstrike hits near russian airbase accused of housing weapons in syria um is, is the fact that they got, they're too busy with their own, which is funny because it's like, that's why I always laugh whenever they're like, man, Russia's going to help Iran and Russia's going to help Lebanon and all this, all the like, uh, pro Russia, pro Palestine, uh, chatters. Well, not even chatters in this community, but like people that chirp online are like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, do you, do you not recognize that Russia's got his own to deal with? Anyway, they have to deal with the top of the hour ad break. Just kidding. They don't because they're all using VPNs to watch me. If there are even any Russians in Russia that still watch after your government called me gay, which is not banned here, but no ads. All right, nice. Uh, here's the three minute ad break now. Unless did Russia really call you gay? They just said I'm like a like a gay live streamer instead of dying in a, in the grayest town you've ever seen to like a Ukrainian drone dropping a grenade in my lap, which is what manly men do. Here's the three minute ad break now. What is this beautiful thing? Holy trail camera captures stunning footage of Lynx in northern Minnesota. That's fire. But yeah, a suspected Israeli airstrike reportedly hit near a Russian airbase in Syria, accused of housing weapons for Iran as terror proxies. Up to 30 missiles were fired at a target near the Kamemim Air Base in Latakia. Latakia. With footage spreading online, a massive explosion in a Russian facility overnight. The appearance of the secondary explosion suggests the, star, uh, the strikes hit their munitions depot. The attack occurred an hour after Iranian Qasem Fars airplane's cargo plane, which had been delivering weapons, landed at the base, Telegraph said, citing reports in Syrian media. The airline has previously been accused of transporting weapons for Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. There have been no official confirmations about the attack, which was cited by Russian wartime bloggers and Lebanon media groups, who suggested drones were used in the strike. Footage of the alleged attack has also been picked up by Ukrainian officials and media outlets celebrating the attack bordering their Moscow enemies. Ukraine Center for Strategic Communications claimed without evidence that the strike decimated the, Ukra the Russian airbase, lauding that Russia's red lines exist only in fairy tales. Prior to reports, dude, 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 Ukrainians are so cucked. They're so cucked. Like, I I'm sorry, brother, brother. You should be the last people on the planet celebrating Israel's bombing campaigns, okay? Every bomb that Israel uses is a bomb that you could have used, okay? That you could have used, using. Like, like, you need it more, man. You need it more. You need it more. And you're over here celebrating Israel using your bombs. You're like, yeah, hell yeah. Done did use. Bro needs a coffee. I need to sleep, dude. I'm, I am not all right. Okay. Ladikia. That's how you pronounce Latikia area in Syria. It's an Assad stronghold. What is this? I want to thank your dad for his service and all he did to remodel the lower Manhattan skyline. It's called Lazikia. Lazikia in Turkish, Ankh.
Anyway, that was neither here nor there. Let's take a look at Israel's Confirmation today on that the U.S. and Israel are discussing bombing Iranian oil. We're discussing that. I think, I think that would be a little... Anyway. Well, anyway, yeah, you're not discussing, old man. That's why I said whenever Joe Biden says, like, Israel, don't do that, just know that Israel is going to do that, okay? Put global oil 4%. Back in Israel, satellite images of the Nevatim airbase show damage done by Iran's missile barrage on Tuesday night. Israel confirmed the hits but said they had no... Dude, for those of you who don't understand, okay, I, I'm going to repeat this one more time. It's something that I've mentioned months ago when talking about, like, a broader conflict and why it would actually greatly damage the global economy. If Israel strikes Iranian oil depots... Iranian oil refineries, Iranian energy infrastructure in any meaningful capacity, Iran has vowed to retaliate against the entire Gulf. Iran has, in the past, by way of the Houthis, maybe it was Iran, maybe it was the Houthis, who knows, struck Saudi oil refineries. They are, if you look on a map, not that far off from being able to strike the entirety of the global, not the entirety, but a big chunk of the global oil production. They have said, once again, if you hit us, we will hit all of your oil refineries. It's, think about it like this. It's a mutually assured destruction button, right? It's, a, it's the exact same principle. It's like nobody wants to use nukes, but if you use nukes, then the enemy will use nukes as well. And here it is. The military official of Khatab Hezbollah in the Islamic resistance in Iraq, Abu Ali al Askari, says, In the name of the Almighty, if the energy war begins, the world will lose 12 million barrels of oil per day. As Khatab Hezbollah previously stated, either everyone enjoys the blessings or everyone is deprived of them. As in, they are going to, they're going to put an off switch on the global economy. Okay. This is the only thing holding back, uh, I guess, Biden from giving the total go-ahead. Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the UAE, Bahrain, and Kuwait have declared neutrality and will not allow the U.S. to use their air bases against Iran. That probably won't stop Iran from hitting them, I suspect. Don't tell end of oil protesters. Yeah, Fango Lives is in the chat right now salivating at the prospect. Fango, <laughs> Fango Lives is in the chat right now, nutting, throwing out thick-ass robes, thinking of the prospect of just, like, lighting every oil refinery on fire. He has converted to Shia Islam. I have, I, I'm hearing from my sources on the ground that Fango Lives has now converted to Shia Islam. He is now, he has now found the light of Allah. He will be going to Jannah. He is a revert and a firm believer in the Iranian mission to light the entire region's oil refineries on fire. He's screaming Ya Ali in the streets. Yes, he will be participating in that in Nevruz. Or is it Nevruz? It is Nevruz, right? Isn't that the one like where they jump over coals and stuff? I don't know. I'm Sunni. I've... You think these Najaf clowns will go up to oil fields in northern Iraq and tell the Kurdish clans, oh, stop making money off of oil or we will shoot you or not go back to their in the south? Listen, all I'm saying, I'm just reporting. Nevruz is not Islamic. What is it? What is the thing that the, the Shias do? Don't they do this thing? I don't know. No, not Ashura. Isn't, wait, what? The self-flagelling uh, thing. Nevruz is Zoroastrian. Wait, really? Is the Iranian New Year or all Iranians do it, including Kurds, so you actually know what it is, big dog? Oh, that's just the Iranian tradition. It's called, maybe the U.S.'s love for Israel will be the reason we switched to renewable energy. It's called Shahar, Shahar Shambe Sori. Yeah, it's the Wednesday before Persian New Year. Nevruz is done by people in Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan and stuff as well, I'm sure. I'm Azadi saying this. Oh, Charshambe Sori. Charshamba is how we say Wednesday. Charshamba. That's how we say Wednesday in Turkish. That makes sense. Anyway, let's continue. Significant effect. What is more obviously confirmed, though, this. The remains of an Iranian ballistic missile still lying where its mission came to rest in the southern deserts of Israel. And Alex joins us live from Jerusalem with the latest. 
Yes, I mean, where does this leave Israel tonight? A strange confluence of moods simultaneously. Of course, on the surface, it is the Jewish New Year, a time for families to get together, businesses to close. Everything is, is, is very muted uh, and quiet uh, uh, around those celebrations, and they are particularly muted. Uh, Jerusalem itself, quiet, of course, there's no, very few tourists here. During Ashura, the Shias bring out machetes and slap themselves with them as punishment for killing Ali because of the uh, the war and the general security situation but beyond that underneath uh, perhaps more deeply a sense of foreboding sense of being in a, a pressure cooker with the pressure constantly building uh, as i've just outlined in the report tonight you can see why that is happening in terms of of the, gl the global issues going on ramped up today by what president biden in the state said about uh, talking openly with israel about the possibility it's about hussein not ali okay i don't know i just know that like that's the that's something that the that the Shias do. They just like self-flagellate, is what I thought. Um, in in like uh, yeah, I, I just I like I said, I'm Sunni. I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's a little Shia nowadays, but <laughs> like I said, I I don't fully know what the what the thing is that people do. Of striking Shias are the Catholics of the Muslim world. Oil installations in Iran. Uh, the sense, of course, it is a question of when, not if, uh, Israel will retaliate to those 181 missiles fired a couple of nights ago by Iran into Israel. And of course, what then Iran may do in response should that happen. Hudrelez isn't, don't they also do a, don't they have like a candy too? Hudrelez uh, starts on the night of May 5th and ends on May 6th in the Gregorian calendar and April 23rd. On the Julian calendar is observed in Turkey, Crimea, Syria, Iraq, the Caucasus, the Balkans. Yeah, obviously this is not an Iranian thing, bro. What are we talking about? Hudrelez is regarded as one of the most important seasonal bayrams, which is a festival, a holiday in Turkey and parts of the Middle East. Called the day of Hazur, Ruz Hazur in Turkey, Hudrelez is celebrated as the day in which the prophets Hazur, Al Qadir, and Ilyas met on Earth. They have candy too, no? Like not shekar bayram gibi değil de başka bir başka bir şeker yok mu? Vermiyorlar mı şey için? Kaldırıyor. Yanlış mı hatırlıyorum? It's like, oh. okay, whatever. What are we doing? I'm just like talking about the dumbest right now. Alex Thompson. Well, nine people were killed during. It appears the Turkish tanky piker has arisen the night here when an Israeli strike hit a medical center run by a group aligned with Hezbollah in the heart of the city as Alex just reported not far from the parliament building and Western embassies Israel described it as a precise attack earlier today I went down to the scene of that attack most Israeli airstrikes in Beirut are concentrated around the southern area known as Dahir populated by Hezbollah and where Hassan Nasrallah was killed last week. But this blast Hassan in the centre of Beirut was close to the rich downtown areas of a city that had in recent years become a Middle Eastern playground. Nobody here was expecting to find themselves close to an airstrike. In a normal residential neighbourhood, people are shocked and upset that they are not just clearing away the debris, but finding out who was killed and what's happened to the injured. Four are still in hospital, 10 have been released. This is not a Hezbollah area. The dominant group here is another Shia organization called Amal. And this building was a sort of a civil defense headquarters with a health center on these floors that were targeted around 2.15 in the middle of the night. The locals here say there were 10 or more people in it at the time of the airstrike, and many of them have ended up dead. As the war Weren't they healthcare professionals? Did you know the idea of her also targeting and bombarding Christian communities in Lebanon? My cousin who visited Lebanon recently told me his friend's home was annihilated. He's also Catholic. Yeah. No, I, I, I did know that, yes. War goes on. Amal is effectively aligned now with Hezbollah. The Israelis say they were targeting terrorists. Were these people terrorists? I... Every word they say is a lie. Lie, lie, lie. Hey, the... Everywhere here, there are displaced people too from southern Lebanon and, like Maria, parts of Beirut ordered to evacuate. So what will you do? We can't go to another place. There is just here. So now we are waiting if we die or survive. We were in Maisel Jabal in south and came to Beirut, to our house in Dahi. When the strikes took place in Dahi, we came to this school because we don't have a house. 
where we will go. Beirut houses almost half the population of Lebanon, but hundreds of thousands have had to flee their homes already. And most think things will only get worse tomorrow. Well, Israel warned residents of more villages and towns in southern Lebanon to evacuate to areas over 30 miles north of the border. But much of the land near the border is already deserted, with hundreds of thousands of people fleeing their homes in fear that Israel's ground invasion could be expanding. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Sekunda Kamani, is in the southern city of Tyre, where the streets are virtually empty. Sekunda. Well, Kristen, we've been hearing both incoming and outgoing fire throughout the day. We can't really get any closer to the border, partly because Hezbollah uh, have told us that we're not allowed to do that, partly also because the Israeli army has warned that any cars travelling from north to south in the region could be targeted. So it's hard to build up an independent picture of what's happening in terms of Israel's ground incursion into southern Lebanon and Hezbollah's fight back against it. We do know that close to the border, a Red Cross convoy today was uh, struck by a, an Israeli strike, that four paramedics were wounded and that one Lebanese uh, government army soldier was killed. The World Health Organization has also said today that 28 on-duty medics have been killed in the past 24 hours. All of this, I think, underlining just how dangerous the situation is. Across southern Lebanon, the sights and sounds of war as the number of killed and injured by Israeli strikes rises. Hezbollah have sustained devastating blows, but they're still the dominant presence here, and they're controlling what we can film. Hussein Jeshi is one of the group's members of parliament. Many people here in Lebanon are very angry about what Israel is doing, but many are also angry with Hezbollah for, they say, dragging the country into a war they did not want. How would you respond? Everyone is entitled to express their opinion. We respect that, but we are committed to our duty, to our homeland above anything else. Is there anything short of a ceasefire in Gaza that would lead Hezbollah to stop firing on northern Israel? Because Hezbollah, this whole country, is paying a very high price for this war. The Zionist regime is the one that has dragged Lebanon into this war. We ask the Zionists to stop their massacres on us and the people of Gaza. The city of Tyre at the site of yet another airstrike. When you look around at the scale of the destruction here, you get a sense of just how powerful the explosions must have been. These were two buildings that are now just reduced to this huge pile of rubble. People's. That's from the Guardian article, targeting paramedics. Paramedics say they began to notice a pattern with the strikes. Whenever they arrived at a location to start rescue operations, they said Israeli airstrikes would follow. They're double tapping specifically to, they're double tapping specifically to hit paramedics. And um, he's not saying Zionist regime, he's saying Zionist enemy. Why don't they translate right with the, with the Arabic? Uh, I don't know. Personal possessions, children's toys strewn amongst the debris. Israel accuses Hezbollah of hiding its fighters and weapons amongst the population. Uh, Hussein's wife and daughter were amongst those killed here. There were no explosives or rockets here, he says. But we are used to this. Our blood, our bodies, our children are all for Sayyid Hassan, referring to the slain Hezbollah leader. Hezbollah is firmly enmeshed into all aspects of life here, running a state within a state. It even has its own civil defense team. Seven of its members were killed in Beirut overnight. You believe that your teams are being deliberately targeted? They're deliberately targeting us. I've seen it with my own eyes. Maybe they hit us by accident once, but we've had 30 colleagues killed in the past week. They can't all be a mistake. We're only getting a glimpse into this conflict, but even amidst competing narratives, the suffering is clear to see. Well, as you were saying, Chris, a little earlier, more than 20 towns and villages today warned to evacuate by the Israeli army. That brings the total to uh, around 70 uh, towns and villages that have been given such orders. And what's significant about uh, the ones that were given out today is that some of these areas are to the north of where we are right now, entire to the north of the Litani River. So that's deeper into Lebanon than the area 
uh, Israel had previously been talking about pushing Hezbollah out from, and that's only going to strengthen fears about the possible eventual scale of Israel's offensive here. Sekunder Kamani. Now, today, of course, is Rosh Hashanah, one of the biggest Jewish holidays of the year. So there are few people in Israel giving television interviews. But from here in Lebanon, joining me now is the Minister for the Economy, Amin Salam. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This economy was already in such trouble. What is the impact of this war? Well, good evening. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Definitely, uh, the impact of the war on the economy is devastating. Everybody knows very well that prior to the beginning of this war, Lebanon was already struggling for almost three years with a, a collapse in the economy, loss of the value of the Lebanese uh, uh, you know, a national currency, uh, unemployment, social issues. I mean, the country has been struggling for a while way before the war. The war came to add yet another layer of challenge to Lebanon. Uh, now we're talking about over a million displaced people, uh, not to mention the million and a half, million or 700,000 uh, Syrian refugees that are still uh, uh, in Lebanon. All that has really piled up to turn this nation into crisis mode. Today, uh, the GDP is is, 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 in, is in terrible shape. The, the broadcaster is Channel 4 chat. Uh, because uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people lost employment over the past year. Most of them are youth uh, uh, working power uh, in the south, in the agricultural sector, in major industries uh, in the Beka Valley, in, in, in the south, and parts of Beirut. So... Let, let that alone, we're not talking yet about losing entirely the tourism season, which was a very major, major, major uh, economic support to Lebanon the past three years, given that it was on one of the yeah. few remaining sectors uh, pumping cash into the economy. So now we're not talking anymore about growth. We're not talking about GDP getting better. We're talking about a big emergency cost on Lebanon that is going to last and we don't see the end of it yet. Yeah, I mean, Minister, so many people, as you say, are displaced. They're not working. They have no income. At what point are people going to start running out of money to, to eat? Well, the good thing is that the government had in place, I mean, given the fact that we've been functioning in emergency mode for many years before the war started. So thank God we, we are good on, on the food security level, on the medical aid level. That's how we keeping the people surviving now. But the biggest challenge now is if we don't reach an immediate, and I say immediate, ceasefire uh, with serious talks for peace, uh, the long, uh, you know, the, the, this war extending uh, for longer or expanding further will get Lebanon into a very critical place. It will get the economy into a point of no return. That is where people will begin really facing serious challenges, having income, having cash. They will probably be spending everything they have left in the next few months if they are living in the streets and are having no jobs. Right, but when you talk about ceasefire, the Lebanese army was drawn into the war today, returning fire against Israeli troops in the south, and you have lost soldiers to that war already. I mean, you're being drawn in, aren't you? Well... I mean, I said, I said a few days ago, it's a full-fledged war against Lebanon. I mean, the, the Israeli side is saying that, you know, we're targeting Hezbollah, we're not targeting Lebanon, we're not fighting the Lebanese people, while they're bombing the city. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you now yep. from less than a mile away from where the explosions had happened last night. And that is even two miles less from the governmental palace. So... Drawing the Lebanese army in is, is very dangerous, is very critical. Uh, uh, expansion of that might take us to somewhere where we don't want to go uh, as a nation. So I'm reminded of Kharkiv, an area, an area in Ukraine that had a lot of like ethnic Russians or people who were Russian adjacent. And what the attitude of the people of Kharkiv was after Russia invaded Ukraine. The reality of the matter is there is no bombing people into liking you campaign. It's not, that's not how it works. Okay. You don't bomb people into being like, Oh, well I love these guys. 
I love these guys now. Thank you for bombing me. That's not how it works. It, it, it's the same. It is the same exact idiotic principle behind. It is the same exact idiotic principle behind what uh, the Americans said about uh, going into Iraq. They will welcome us as liberators. The hearts and minds campaign. That is to also say that like the allegiances that some in Lebanon might have had for Israel is nowhere near as significant even to begin with. Oh, right, uh, but, but when, uh, we when have... you talk about ceasefire, I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt, but when you talk about ceasefire, no, no, go ahead. isn't the fact that Hezbollah has said they are not prepared to ceasefire without a ceasefire in Gaza? Well, the government's message today uh, was very clear from our prime minister, minister of foreign affairs, after their, uh, uh, you know, meeting as well with the Speaker of the House, uh, uh, President Berry, that the entire government, with all its political parties, Hezbollah included, uh, are in favor of a ceasefire. But the Israeli side is not helping with that because the Israeli uh, side is not showing any intention of ceasefire, any uh, flexibility. It's just a continuous attack on Lebanon and on the people of Lebanon. Uh, Mr. Salam, Minister for the Economy, thank you very much indeed for joining us <sighs> yeah when israel says they're just bombing hezbollah that isn't exactly meant for the lebanese people that's for western ears to hear exactly it's for it's for western ears to hear and analyze and think oh they're doing a great job 